Amen. When we put this conference together, esta I was very excited about doing breakout sessions. Because this is where we get to put it into practice. So I'm going to speak, but we're going to save time for questions, okay? I don't know that I'm going to have the answers. Like in my prayer, I can tell you what I've done wrong. But I know the direction. Pero yo sé la dirección. And I think this is one of the greatest mistakes we see in the church. The weak way in which we approach training elders. La manera débil en que nosotros, eh, preparamos ancianos. That we create a sort of a clergy laity. Distinction. We're the pastor. Somos los pastores. And, but they're the elders or the deacons. Pero ellos son los ancianos y los diáconos. The, they're just supposed to help us a little bit. Nos ayudan un poquito solamente. And then what happens when you get someone as an elder and they start to try to control things? Y luego, ¿qué sucede cuando tienes un anciano que empieza a tratar de controlar la situación? Training men to be elders is the hardest thing in the church. All of us can lock ourselves away for 15 or 20 hours and prepare a sermon. But actually training other men and working with them that seems like it should be reserved for heaven. And yet it can be one of the most rewarding things that we do. Pero puede ser una de las cosas más que hacer. Let's be honest, we need help. Que ser ayuda. M- ministry is heavy. El es it's burdensome. Es una carga. Uh, Colin Marshall, who wrote The Vine Project, Colin Marshall, que el de la vid, expresses this well. Lo esto de esta Quote, we have constantly spoken with pastors Hemos con and lay leaders y con laicos, who are grappling with energy sapping, emotionally exhausting situations. Que están siendo ellos agotados grandemente por situaciones difíciles. E- everything from illness and grief Todo de, uh, problemas de salud con depresión, to heartaches in their own families. To problems in the church. And yet we, we find ourselves wanting a normal year. With, without crisis. And it never comes. Amen. We keep thinking we'll train elders when we can slow down. And yet the very thing that costs so much time, training elders, is the very thing we need right now to carry our load. So what do we do? Entonces, ¿qué hacemos? There's only one of me. Solo hay uno de mí. There's only one of you. Solo hay uno de usted. Listen to what Paul said. Escucha lo que dijo Pablo. El segundo Timoteo, capítulo 2, versículo 2. Second Timothy 2, 2. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's turn there, because we're going to speak about this verse. Vamos a seguir a Timoteo 2, 2. Vamos a hablar de este pasaje. In fact, can I have someone stand up and read that for me? Si alguien se puede poner de pie, por favor, y lee esa lectura. En español, por favor. In English. In Spanish. Spanish. Gracias. Lo que has oído de mí ante muchos testigos, esto encarga a hombres fieles que sean idóneos para enseñar también a otros. Gracias. Paul is writing to his young disciple Timothy. Pablo está escribiendo a su discípulo joven, Timoteo. Who is pastor of what church? Es pastor de cuál iglesia? Ephesus. Ephesus, yeah, Ephesus. And he's come into this church. Ya ha venido a esta iglesia. And he's got a tough job. Que tiene un trabajo difícil. He's pastoring on his own. Está pastoreando solo. Oh, he may have elders. Tal vez tendrá ancianos. In, in fact, it appears that he does because there's some men who are teaching bad things. 
Parece que sí, porque vemos que él tiene unos que están haciendo cosas irónicas. But they're not faithful. Pero no son fieles. Okay. So what is he to do? Entonces, ¿qué debe de hacer? He is to take these things he has heard from Paul in the presence of many witnesses and entrust to faithful men. So I want to look at four steps to training elders. And it's going to be very, very practical. And I realize this is being recorded, but I'm going to be very raw. Okay? Because niceness does not produce faithful elders. Okay. Being easy does not produce faithful soldiers. The Marines don't ask you if you want to sleep in. So, let's look at our first one, identification. The most crucial step es el paso más crucial. How do you identify faithful men? ¿Cómo se identifica, identifica hombres fieles? He didn't say perfect men. No dijo hombres perfectos. He didn't say those who are ready. No dijo los que están listos. This is the beginning of the process. Este es el principio del proceso. Okay. But what is considered faithful? Pero ¿qué es considerado fiel? We have to define that. We can't just assume. Tenemos que definirlo. No podemos asumir. We have a saying at the church I pastor, Metro Bible. If, you, if we have to send a guy to the moon, we will choose a faithful farmer over an inconsistent astronaut every day. Does that make sense? We will choose a faithful farmer over a brilliant astronaut every day of the week. Se dan cuenta, escogeremos un granjero fiel sobre un astronauta increíble todos los días. Think about that picture of a faithful farmer. Piensa en ese retrato de un granjero fiel. He rises early. Se levanta temprano. He works late. Trabaja tarde. He puts his shoulder to the plow. Él pone su mano a la obra. For a harvest he cannot see. Por una que él no ve. And won't see for some time. Y no verá por mucho He makes do and never complains. He works el, hard, never complains. Y nunca se queja. He doesn't complain about the conditions. No se queja de las or the weather. O del clima. Or the cost o, on, on his life. O el costo que tiene sobre su vida, ese He may not have the education of an astronaut. Tal vez no la de un He may not understand scientific theory. Tal vez no la But I've never met a farmer who wasn't willing to improve his craft. Write this down. Esto. Biblically. Bíblicamente. Faithfulness is the only measure of success this side of heaven. La fidelidad es el único indicativo de éxito en este lado del cielo. When Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Cuando Pablo dice, imíteme a mí como yo imito a Cristo. That is the single measure of success. Esa es la única manera de Poder saber lo que es éxito. By all worldly standards, Paul was somewhat of a failure. Por los estándares del mundo, el apóstol Pablo era un fracaso. Christ for sure was a failure. Cristo seguramente fue un fracaso. But that's according to the world's eyes. Pero eso es conforme los ojos del mundo. If we want our sheep si queremos que nuestras ovejas to model their Shepherds, que sigan y a sus pastores, we better make sure they're pursuing the right thing. Que que están la cosa so, what do we look for in identifying faithfulness? Entonces, ¿qué para la well, when Christ was asked, what's the most important commandment? Pues fue ¿cuál es el más How did he respond? Someone. <laughs> Love the Lord your God Amado with Dios. medio corazón, no, todo, all your heart, todo tu soul, 
Mind, fuerte, right? Fuerza. Strength, okay? And then love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? So, biblically, the measure of faithfulness is not the most brilliant guy. He's probably not the guy with the PhD. He's a guy that loves the Lord and loves his people. So, who has God placed around you that loves the Lord Jesus Christ and loves the church? Let's start right there. In fact, let's get more specific because everyone says they love Jesus, right? Everyone says they love the church, right? Right before they leave. Okay. Do they spend time with the things they love? What men around you spend time in their Bibles? ¿Cuáles hombres alrededor de ustedes pasan tiempo en sus Biblias? It's a fair question, right? Es una pregunta normal. But you may say, I don't know who's spending time in their Bibles. Pero podrás decir, pues yo no sé quién pasa tiempo en su Biblia. If the biblical measure of faithfulness is to love God and love others, si la manera bíblica de definir la fidelidad es amar a Dios y amar a otros. And that shows itself by learning the Bible and being with others. Y si eso de me, de, se demuestra en amando la Biblia y estando con otros. Let's talk about how faithfulness works. Vamos a hablar cómo la fidelidad funciona. So who around you is faithful? Entonces, ¿quién alrededor de usted es fiel? So who's spending time in their Bible Every day. It's hard for a pastor to know, right? Here's the practical. Get some men around you and say, let's study a particular book of the Bible this semester. Un libro de la Biblia este semestre. Let's spend time in the Word every day individually. Vamos a pasar tiempo en la palabra todos los días individualmente. And then over the next six months, y después sobre los próximos seis meses, talk about it. Vamos a platicarlo. So, what did you learn today? Entonces, ¿qué aprendió hoy? What chapter are you on? ¿Y cuál capítulo está? How is the Lord shaping you? ¿Cómo se está moldeando el Señor? People will be honest. Well, I, I meant to read it this morning. Bueno, lo leer. Yeah, I've been a little behind lately. Sí, estoy un poco atrasado. Work's been so busy. Estoy tan ocupado con el trabajo. Listen to who is faithful. Escucha para ver quién está siendo fiel. Listen to who loves their Bible and the Word of God and who loves their sleep. Escucha para ver quién ama la palabra de Dios y quién ama más el sueño. He may be the neatest guy in the world, but if he's not spending time in his Bible, he's not going to be a good elder. Make a mental note of those who are. What about being with the body? How do I know if someone loves the body? You know, here in America, especially the Bible Belt, we hate to quantify things. That's hard. Yeah. Because it, it feels legalistic, right? Okay. But we have to be honest with ourselves. If someone says they love the body, si dicen que ama el cuerpo, but they come only once or twice a month to church, I would say they love something else. Diría yo que ama otra cosa. So, of the men around you, de los hombres alrededor de usted, watch for who comes early. Mira para ver quién llega temprano. Who stays late? ¿Quién se queda tarde? Who dons the robe, uh, dons the apron of a servant rather than the robe of a scholar? Are they willing to stack chairs long before they stand behind a pulpit? We're looking for men who don't just come early. 
but bring their families early who don't just come to worship service but come to Sunday school and prayer time. Those things in and of themselves do not make them good. But they show where the heart is. If soccer practice, el fútbol, right? Si la práctica del fútbol de los niños. And family time. Y el tiempo de familia. Trump worship time. Es más importante que el, el, la hora de adoración. It's not your man. Él no es tu hombre. Now, Ahora, side note. Una nota. Sometimes you'll find a man. A veces encontrarás un hombre. Who is a model of faithfulness. Que es un modelo de fidelidad. He spends time in the word. Toma tiempo en la palabra. And he loves the body. Ama el cuerpo. But his wife... Not so much. Pero su esposa, no tanto. She doesn't seem as interested. Ella no está tan Maybe it shows itself in casual attendance. Tal vez es ella más viene de vez en a la Or they don't open their home for hospitality. O no su hogar para Draw near to this man. A ese Show him what faithfulness looks like in shepherding his family. Cómo se ve la en el a su Maybe he doesn't know better. Tal vez él no sabe. Maybe she doesn't know better. Tal vez ella no sabe. You know, give him a chance to rise to the occasion. Dale una para y, y Graciously take him to a crossroad. Muy con gracia, a una and see what he chooses. Y a ver lo que él Is he going to choose loving and shepherding the church? Va a escoger amando y pastoreando la iglesia. Or is he fearful of his wife? O es temeroso de su esposa. If it's the latter, si es el segundo, he's not your man. Él no es tu hombre. Faithfulness is not having it all together. La fidelidad no es tenerlo todo organizado y bien. We're all in process, amen? Todos estamos en el proceso, amen? But faithfulness is being all in. Pero siendo fiel, estar 100% comprometido. This might be too strong. Esto tal vez era demasiado fuerte. But I look for men whose last thought before they fall asleep at night. And first thought when they wake up in the morning. El primer pensamiento cuando se levantan en la mañana. Is the bride of Christ. Es la iglesia, la novia de Cristo. I can teach the rest. Yo puedo enseñar lo demás. All right. Let's look at invitation. Vamos a ver la invitación. 2 Timothy 2.2 2 again. Otra vez, Timoteo 2, 2. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses. Lo que escuchado de mí en presencia de muchos testigos. In trust. En carga. Do you aspire? Deseas? I asked with a tone of slight pressure to a man named Chris. Yo le pregunté a, a un hombre con poca depresión, a un hombre llamado Chris. It feels a little self-serving if you say yes. Se siente un poquito como se está sirviendo uno mismo si dice sí. He didn't know how to respond. Él no sabía cómo responder. You see, Chris knew it was biblical language. Chris sabía que era lenguaje bíblica. But it scared him. Pero le dio un poco de temor. And it made him feel a little arrogant to say yes. Y se siente un poco arrogante diciendo que sí. I did it on purpose. Lo hice a propósito. And then I was able to shepherd him through the concept. Because the Bible says it's a noble thing, right? Chris was a guy who I had met 11 years ago. He had, as we say, fallen off the wagon of spiritual growth. And his excuse was busyness. Y su excusa era estar demasiado ocupado. He had been married just a couple of years. Estaba casado dos años. Had a young child. Tiene un hijo pequeño. New house, new career. Nueva casa, nueva carrera. And just didn't have time for church like he used to. Y no tenía tiempo para la iglesia como antes lo tenía. But he wanted to re-engage. Pero quería volverse a involucrar. And so he came to me. Entonces vino a mí. He had no idea what it would cost him. Él no sabía lo que le iba a costar. So when I asked him, do you aspire, and I explained it to him, he was willing to listen. I said, let's take it down a notch. Do you want to be discipled? He said, yes. And then I put 
a hurdle in his way. Y luego le puse un I've got 6.30 on Tuesday mornings. Yo tengo las seis y media de la mañana los martes en la mañana. You want to do it? ¿Lo quiere hacer? Uh, uh, sure. Ah, uh, sí. Uh, what, what are we going to do? ¿Qué vamos a hacer? We're going to read a book together. Vamos a leer un libro juntos. He said, I'm not much of a reader. No leo mucho. Frankly, I don't like to read. En realidad no me gusta leer. I said, that's okay. You'll learn to like it. Está bien. Vas a aprender a gustarte. A gustarlo. And that was the beginning of our discipleship relationship. And as I watched him learn to love to read the Bible. And love to stack chairs for his church. A few years later I said, do you aspire? He said, yes. Sí. I had to be clear to him tenía que ser claro con él. that before we train anyone to be an elder, que de antes de a persona, a ser un anciano, we don't just, como se dice, wing it. No hacemos ahí de como los I, I don't just trust sheep to anyone who wants it. No voy a simplemente encargar ovejas a cualquier persona que lo desea. Paul says that we entrust these things. Pablo dice que estas cosas. It's a body of doctrine. Es, es un de it's, it's teaching. Son And teaching is never separate from relationships, right? <coughs> nunca está de las so we're looking for shepherds who don't throw food at sheep. No queremos pastores que tiren la comida a las ovejas. But draw near and gently feed sheep. Pero se acercan a las ovejas y les dan de comer. Shepherds are not on a hilltop overlooking sheep. Los pastores no están encima de la colina mirando a las ovejas abajo. That's what sheep dog do. Eso es lo que hacen los perros de ovejas. Okay. They're among them. Los pastores están entre las ovejas. They smell like sheep. Los pastores huelen como las ovejas. Because they're with them. Porque están con ellas. And to entrust truths to faithful men y para estas verdades a hombres fieles is what 1 Timothy 3 es lo que dice 1 Timoteo 3 and Titus 1, y Tito 1 mean by ability to teach. Es lo que significa tener la habilidad de enseñar. In fact, Titus 1.9 really explains it. En realidad, Tito 1, 9, lo explica muy bien. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word Tiene que aferrarse firmemente a la palabra. as taught como ha sido so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine para que pueda en sana. and rebuke those who contradict. Y y, uh, a los que Anyone can get up and give a sermon. Se puede parar y dar un sermon. But I need elders to be able to handle their tools. Que usar sus What does a shepherd carry? ¿Qué carga un pastor? Huh? A staff? Y otra. What? A rod. That's right. Okay. La vara y el callado. The ability to teach is not just formative. La manera de enseñar no solamente formativo. It's also corrective. Es también para corregir. Okay. It's to teach and feed instruction. Para enseñar y dar instrucción. And protect the flock by refuting bad doctrine. Y protegiendo la grey para refutando doctrinas erróneas. That's a tall order. Eso es algo muy difícil. So we're actually asking our shepherds, our elders, a nuestros pastores, a nuestros ancianos, to not only be theologically qualified, para no solamente estar teológicamente calificados, but to be relationally qualified. Pero también calificados relacionalmente. Elders can't be weird. Los ancianos no pueden ser raros. Elders can't have spiritual B.O. No pueden tener... Un olor fuerte de espiritual que huele feo. They have to be good with people. Tienen que ser buena con la gente. It may not be natural to them. Tal vez no es natural para ellos. But love can overcome that, right? El amor puede sobrepasar eso. Their homes need to be open. Sus hogares tienen que ser abiertos. Okay? We are working very hard to have a multi-ethnic church. Estamos trabajando muy fuertemente para ser una iglesia multicultural, multietnica. No, not because we believe in affirmative action. No porque creemos en la acción afirmativa. But because we believe anyone within a 15-mile circle. Porque creemos que cualquier persona en un radio de 15 millas needs to be reached by our church. 
Necesita ser alcanzada por nuestra iglesia. So we want to bring whoever together regardless of the culture or language. Queremos traer cualquier persona, no importa su cultura o su idioma. And there are strengths and weaknesses in every culture, right? Y hay puntos fuertes y débiles en cada cultura, ¿verdad? Unless you're Argentine and you think you only have strengths. Son los argentinos. Where's my friend Greg? ¿Dónde está mi amigo Greg? Okay. So we've started to break down the barriers in our church. Estamos tratando de derribar esas paredes en nuestra iglesia. Where we can be honest about the strengths and weaknesses of gringos. Debemos ser honestos de los puntos fuertes y débiles de los gringos. And the strengths and weaknesses of Latinos. Y los puntos fuertes y débiles de los latinos también. Why? ¿Por qué? Because we are one man in Christ. Somos un hombre en All Cristo. Right. So, I'm taking some bold steps with my congregation. Estoy tomando unos pasos fuertes con mi congregación. And I'm telling the Anglos that every week, it's okay to be a little uncomfortable and sing a verse or two in Spanish. Soy en mi congregación y está bien sentirse un poco inconfortable cantando uno o dos versos en español durante la alabanza. We have a saying now. Tenemos un dicho ahora. Latinos can learn to come on time. Los latinos pueden aprender a llegar a tiempo. Gringos can learn to not be ruled by time. Y los gringos pueden aprender a no ser gobernados por el tiempo. How does that show itself? ¿Cómo se demuestra eso? Relationships. Relaciones. Loving shepherding. Amando a pastorear. Telling your brother, hey, worship starts at 10.30. Be here. Hermano, hey, la adoración empieza a las diez y media. Be here at 8.30 to help. Llega a las ocho y media para ayudar. And then telling my gringo friends, Dicen a mis amigos gringos, you spend three hours at lunch, it'll be okay. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And yet that's uncomfortable, right? Unless you really love someone. And if you love someone, you will teach them to care more about the others than themselves. I, I love, write down Hebrews 13, 17. What we're really talking about here is soul care. Lo que estamos hablando aquí es el cuidado del alma. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey your leaders. Dice Hebreos 13, 17, Obedezcan a sus líderes. We always get that part, right? Siempre brincamos esa parte, ¿verdad? But I like the second part. Pero me gusta la segunda parte. As those who keep watch over your souls. Como esos que cuidan de sus almas. As those who will give an account. Como porque van a rendir cuentas por eso. Pastors, leaders. Pastores, líderes, you will stand before God one day and he will ask you, how's Susie Smith? Did she grow? Because God does speak Spanish. Okay. <laughs> right? Can I say, who? Diría yo, quién? I don't know her. No, la conozco. no. I need shepherds to be theologically and relationally qualified. No, necesito pastores que están teológicamente y relacionalmente capacitados. And I want them to be among the sheep. Y quiero que estén entre las ovejas. This process may take two years. Este proceso puede tomar dos años. It may take five years. O puede tomar cinco años. But it rarely takes less than that. Pero casi nunca toma menos que eso. So Chris said, yes, I aspire. Entonces Chris dijo, sí, yo lo deseo. And this is how I responded to him. Y esto es como yo le a él. Now, mind you, this is after three years of discipleship. Great. Fantastico. I would like to invite you Me to a multi-year training program a un entrenamiento de muchos años, with no guarantees sin garantía, to train you to be a shepherd. A entrenarte a ser un pastor. Heavy, huh? Pesado, ¿no? Okay. But here's the question. Pero aquí está la pregunta. We want the right guys. Queremos los hombres correctos. You don't want to get a guy in an office and have to get him out two years later. No quieres poner un hombre en un oficio y después tener que sacarlo. That's one of my mistakes. Eso es uno de mis errores. Three. Número tres. Preparation. Preparación. Entrust to faithful men Encarga hombres fieles who will be able. Quien serán uh, capaces. So, what process do we use to train? 
¿Qué proceso usamos para entrenar? I mean, what, what book in the Bible does it say? A, B, C, D. ¿En cuál libro de la Biblia dice A, B, C, D? Yes, yeah, step one, do this. Step two, do that. Paso uno esto, paso dos esto. I can tell you what I've learned by applying the gospel. Les puedo decir lo que yo he aprendido a través de la aplicación del Evangelio. Our church has a theme verse. Nuestra iglesia tiene un versículo de, de, de lema. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8. Primera Tesalonicenses 2, 8. Having so fond an affection for you, we were well pleased to impart not only the gospel of God, but our very lives because you have become so very dear to us. That theologically and relationally qualified. So in order to chart the process of training an elder, Entonces, para poner los pasos de entrenar un anciano, we came up with the goal of what we want them to be able to do. I don't need governors. No necesito gobernantes. I don't need lawmakers. No necesito gente que hace leyes. The Bible doesn't need lawmakers. La Biblia no necesita hacedores de leyes. He's given us his word. Nos ha dado su palabra. 90% of what we do is shepherding people. 90% lo que hacemos es pastorear a personas. 10% is governance. 10% es gobernanza. So what is our goal for these men to be able to do? Entonces, ¿cuál es el met la meta de llegar a estos hombres poder hacer? Uh, and by the way, I'll, I'll translate this into Spanish, and if anyone wants it, you know, just go onto Facebook and we'll send it to you. So you don't have to write everything down. Shepherding is a fluid process es un fluido where a theologically and relationally qualified person donde un hombre capacitado teológicamente y relacionalmente imparts the word and their life impone la palabra y su vida to those God has placed in their care. A los que Dios ha puesto en su cuidado. So if I can set that as, this is the goal, si esta es la meta, then I can talk about the steps to get there. Después puedo hablar de los pasos de cómo llegar ahí. I'm going to tell you what I do, Te voy a decir lo que yo hago, and you can apply it to your world. Y lo pueden aplicarlo a su mundo. But I will tell you, don't apply it to your preference. Pero les voy a decir, no se lo apliquen a su preferencia. Don't even do what's easy for you because we're asking them to do the hard things as well, right? And as pastors, we never want to take the easy way out. So after identifying and inviting two to four men, we will meet once a week early in the morning for the express purpose of elder training. I expect them to come on time having read the chapter so that our meeting can focus on not the text but on application. Así nuestra reunión se puede enfocar no en el texto, pero en la aplicación. I use real world situations. Yo uso situaciones reales del mundo. In trusting real people in the body. Y les encargo gente del cuerpo. And forcing them not to take the easy route, but to shepherd well. Y les animo a no tomar la salida fácil, pero a pastorear bien. So, I'll meet with them regularly. But then I'll also, I'll also meet with them socially. I expect them to come by my house anytime. I want my wife to get to know their wife. Regular time on the phone. If I'm going to invite them to the most joyfully painful task, I better make them my best friend. Okay? That doesn't mean we're going to be just alike. I'm nothing like him. <laughs> but our hearts are knit together. We're, 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 we're in the yoke serving together. 
by the time we put a guy before the body to be examined, he's not only actively shepherding, ya no está solamente, uh, activamente, but he's gone through on-the-job training. Su so here's some practicals. Unas cosas Within six months' time, Entre seis meses, I want him to choose two other guys to disciple. Que dos otros para él But I don't just spin him off. Pero no lo suelto. I will meet with them for several months me con él por meses. and evaluate, help out, whatever. Evaluar, ayudarle, cualquier cosa que necesite. We'll meet after the discipleship time and say, how did you handle this? Can I help you here? Now, this made Chris very nervous. Ahora esto hizo a Chris muy nervioso. Because he realized that if he's going to teach something in two or three days, he's got to shift from just listening to me tiene que dejar de solamente escuchar a él, to being able to imitate me. A poder imitarlo. And you can't fake that, right? Y eso no se puede hacer. We all know as teachers, you learn a whole lot more when you have to teach, right? So he was not only having to prepare, but he was having to do what I did with him. He was having to love on them and be patient with them and ask questions and guide and shape them and sometimes confront them. We would also invite him to an elder meeting to watch on without comment. So he's learning two things. He's watching and listening and he's realizing that he needs to submit to people who've been doing it longer. The worst thing is to get a new convert or a young elder who all of a sudden wants to make a lot of decisions. We would also ask them to sit in on counseling sessions, but don't talk. We would then have them shadow another elder. In the car, listening to him talk on the phone. En el carro, escuchándolo hablar por teléfono. Respond kindly to people who are biting back. Respondiendo con, con gracia, amor, hay personas que estaban enojadas y atacándole. Becoming discerning with people. Aprendiendo a ser discerning, tener discernimiento en, en, en cuestión de uh, estar con la gente. Learning to be comfortable with asking the question, what is that person really saying? Estar confrontable, confortable con la pregunta o entendiendo qué en verdad está diciendo esa persona. What I mean by that is that we often think that if I realize someone is doing something wrong, I have to then not like them. Para evitar la tentación de que cuando alguien está haciendo algo mal, inmediatamente no, ya no me gusta esa persona. Our Lord would hate all of us, right? So our Lord loves us, but he doesn't leave us in sin or, or in error. So in this on-the-job training, it is studying theology. And it is reading a lot of books. But it is life-on-life -life discipleship. Number four, Número evaluation. La evaluación. Able to teach others also. Tiene, tiene la capacidad de enseñar a otros. So we've identified faithful men. Hemos identificado hombres fieles. We've invited them to a rigorous schedule. Los hemos invitado a un horario muy riguroso. And we have prepared them to shepherd the flock. Y los hemos preparado a pastorear las ovejas. Are they ready? ¿Están listos? ¿Están listos? Who knows? ¿Quién sabe? Who knows? You know, how many people graduate college with a very high GPA and can't get a job? It's a question not easily answered. Are they ready? Mistake number two. Error número dos. In the past, I have trained men. En el pasado, yo entrenaba hombres. I've watched them serve even admirably as deacons. Les visto servir admirablemente, aun como diáconos. I made them elders. Los hice ancianos. 
They weren't ready. No estaban listos. Chuck Swindoll said it this way. Chuck Swindoll lo dijo así. The steel of greatness is forged in the pit. Está diciendo que el metal de, de grandeza está hecha en el pozo. Metal has to be tested. El metal tiene que ser probado. Let me explain this way. Let me explain it this way. Biblical love, agapao, okay? Biblical love is doing what is best for another regardless of the cost. El amor bíblico, agape, agapao, es hacer lo mejor para la persona, aun si no le gusta. Remember, the measure of faithfulness is does someone love God and as a result love others regardless of what they're going to get from them. Recuerda que la fidelidad es amar a Dios y también amar al prójimo, no importando cómo la persona va a reaccionar. So I need to find out if they're ready. Entonces, yo tengo que ver si están listos. And the way to find out is, are they willing to do the hard things? Even when it costs them personally. Aun cuando les cuesta personalmente. Did you catch that last part? ¿Entendieron esa última parte? So what do we do? Entonces, ¿qué hacemos? Before we put someone up, for an elder, Antes de a para ser un anciano, I purposely put them in a situation yo, con propósito, los pongo una situación difícil, a shepherding situation, a counseling situation una situación de pastoral, una situación de consejería, that I know will cost them. Que yo sé les va a Meaning that I know this sheep will bite back. Que, diciendo que yo entiendo que esa oveja le va a morder potentially bringing grief upon him. A él mismo, uh, mucho dolor. Maybe even tarnishing his reputation. Aún, tal vez, su and I watch whether he's willing to do it or not. Y veo para ver si está a o no. The last thing the church needs is a hired shepherd. La cosa que la es un, uh, pastor asalariado. When someone is put in a difficult situation like that, I need to hear them say, this is what I signed up for. I need to expose his metal. A.W. Tozer said, God doesn't use a man until he hurts him deeply. If ministry was easy, everyone would do it. Because the pay is good, right? <laughs> no, we, we need to see if he loves the Lord and loves others as a result, or if he loves himself. Y ama a otros look, de una manera verdadera. Look, if seminary could accomplish this, we would have everyone get their Masters of Divinity. Mira, si el seminario pudiera lograr esto, mandaríamos a todos al seminario para sacar su maestría. But I have yet to see a class that says, come and be hurt. Pero nunca he visto una clase que dice, ven para ser, para sufrir. Come give your life with no recognition to shepherd the flock of God. Ven a dar tu vida sin reconocimiento para pastorear la gracia de Dios. Now, the positive of all this, de todo esto, and as I look out and see many pastors, especially from Simeon Trust, y aquí estoy acá pastores, del Simeon Trust is there anything you'd rather do? ¿Algo otra cosa que hacer? No. no. It is the most joyful pain, but the most rewarding thing. It may take many years to do this. But as a friend of mine used to say, the best time to plant a tree is 25 years ago. So let's start planting trees. All right, we've got about 10 minutes. I don't know that I have any answers, but any questions? Yeah. Yes. Um, so in elder training, typically, um, yeah, let me run through three or four in a progression. What we're really talking about here, shepherding, discipleship, 
It's the same word as counseling, right? We don't often interchange those. Sí, pastoreando, discipulando, aconsejando son como la misma cosa. We oftentimes think of discipleship as only formative, right? Estamos discipulados como solamente formativo. And, and, and uh, counseling is only corrective. Y aconsejería solamente para corregir. Mixed with secular psychology. Con un poquito de psicología secular. But scripture sees discipleship as both formative and corrective based on the gospel. Pero la palabra muestra que el discipulado es formativo y correctivo en el Evangelio. Do you believe in perseverance of the saints? Creen la perseverancia de los santos. Philippians 1.6. Filipenses 1.6. He who began a good work in you may complete it. El que empezó la obra no sé, tal vez lo cumplirá. Or will complete it. O lo va a cumplir. So therefore we preach with an unction for change. Entonces eh, predicamos esperando cambio. Knowing that the Holy Spirit grows his people by his word. Sabiendo que el Espíritu Santo crece a su pueblo a través de la palabra. So what we're teaching here. Entonces, lo que estamos enseñando aquí. Is relational shepherding. Es pastoreando re relacionalmente. Counseling and discipleship. Consejería en el discipulado. So here's a progression of four books. Una progresión de cuatro libros. You have to get people to understand what you're talking about. Tienes que la gente entender de lo que estamos hablando. Okay, so Instruments in the Redeemer's Hands by Paul Tripp. I guess we should probably write them yeah. here so they can write it down. Who's a good writer? Not my son. <laughs> I've seen your handwriting. <laughs> Tiffany, you go up here and write these for us? Okay. Instruments in the Redeemer's Hands. Instrumentos en las manos del Redentor, por Paul Tripp. And I can send these out to you. English is fine. Yeah. Yeah, these are translated in Spanish? Yeah, instruments is translated in Spanish. Who has that, by the way? Instruments in the hands. Yep. Yeah. It's excellent. Excellent. It should be the first thing anyone reads going to seminary, Eso too. Es el libro que cada lee oh, you got good seminario. writing. She writes well. Okay. <laughs> um, that tells you what you're doing. Eso les enseña qué están haciendo. Does anyone know if trellis and the vine is available in Spanish? Yes, it is. Okay. Trellis, T-R-E-L-L-I-S. -L -L Enredado y la vid. Uh -huh. Trellis and the vine. And the vine. Okay. Trellis and the vine teaches you how to go about doing what we've talked about, identifying men. It's the only book out there that says, look around you, find the most faithful, find the closest to replication, and... Use him first. Este libro les enseña lo que estamos platicando, cómo identificar a los hombres, cómo entrenarlos y prepararlos. Number three, the shepherd leader. Número tres, el pastor líder. I think, it, I think it's available. But again, we can put these on. Uh, the shepherd leader. Two, two, two. Who's the author? Uh, Timothy Whitmer, W-I-T-M-E-R. Number four, biblical eldership. Number four, uh, That's available in Spanish, right? Alexander Strzok? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Has anyone read that? Yeah? It's good, isn't it? Okay. All of these you want to go through. Thank you, Tiffany, so much. Uh, you want to go through with your men. ¿Quieres leer estos con tus hombres? Make them buy the book. Don't let them borrow the book. Okay, they can live without a cup of coffee or two. Have them write in the book. My library is completely useless after I die. Learn to engage, argue, whatever, with the book. Go through it together. And then have them take their disciples through it. If you already have elders, start here at the beginning. You might, for emergency's sake, have to start with biblical eldership. How many Baptists do we have in here? Okay. Do Baptists think that deacons are elders? So sometimes you have to start and say, no, 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 they're different. No, 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 son diferentes. All right. So those are really, really, really helpful to defining terms. Ayuda mucho para definir los términos. One of your greatest challenges is going to be, they're going to think you're weird. So when you can have 
Other people say what you're saying. It helps. Thanks, Robbie. Gracias. Otra pregunta? Yes, however you want. Thank you first uh, for the TED. It's been extremely helpful. Um, how would you encourage someone that has strong evidence of having the character, the heart, the passion, but struggles with feeling like he doesn't measure up and is always discouraged when he says he finds himself unfit for the, the labor of shepherding. Yeah. Even though in action he does so well relationally and theologically is sound. Yeah. Uh, I mean, That's a good question. That's, That's a good question. question. Yes, yes, please, please. La please. pregunta es que si hay un hombre que tiene las calificaciones, los requisitos bíblicos, pero él siente que él no es digno de ser un anciano. ¿Cómo se puede tratar esa situación? So, I'm going to draw from Instruments in the Redeemer's Hands. Voy a sacar de esto de este libro. Okay. Remember how I said faithfulness, what the definition of faithfulness, loving God, loving others? Recuerda el requisito de la fidelidad, es amando a Dios, amando a otros. That is the single measure of success. Eso es el único éxito. The single measure of maturity for a believer is discernment. Es discernimiento. Baby Christians can be faithful. Uh, cristianos bebés pueden ser fiel. They can even be knowledgeable. Aún pueden conocer mucho. But it takes maturity to be able to discern. Pero toma madurez para poder discernir. So to answer your question, as a shepherd, you have to discern his heart. Como un pastor, tienes que discernir su corazón. To deal with him, okay? Para ayudarle. So, but you don't know his heart, right? Pero no conoces su corazón. <laughs> So what do we do? We assume the best, right? Even though we may discern that we know what is in the hearts of men. Okay, we're not totally depraved as Christians anymore. But we still have the flesh, right? Okay, so someone read to me 1 Thessalonians 5.14. And if you'll stand up and read that. Si se pone de pie y lo lea voz alta, por favor. Exgrima. También os rogamos, hermanos, que amonestéis a los ociosos, que alentéis a los de poco ánimo, que sostengáis a los débiles, que seáis pacientes para con todos. Okay. So, Jorge, what's the first one? Amonestéis. Admonish the unruly. What is being taught here is that we deal with people according to the attitude of their heart. Tratamos a la gente conforme la actitud de su corazón. How does Christ say we how does Christ say we know what is in the heart? ¿Cómo dice Jesús que sabe lo que está en el corazón? Out of the mouth the heart speaks, okay? So we deal with people according to how they speak. Now, sometimes it takes a while for what they say to reveal what's in their heart. Ahora tratamos a la gente conforme a lo que dicen, pero a veces toma tiempo que lo que dicen en verdad refleja el corazón. So what kind of people are we going to admonish? Entonces, ¿Qué tipo de personas vamos a amonestar? Unruly, the rebellious. Los rebeldes. Okay. Is, you, is your man being rebellious? No. no? no I'm, I'm going to push you a little bit. Not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because we don't know. Porque no sabe. But he's not being unruly yet. Okay, so if you were to describe him, which one of these? Si lo vas a describir, ¿cuál de estos? Admonish the unruly, encourage the weak, help the faint-hearted. Is he weak or faint-hearted? Está débil o está débil de corazón? I would say faint-hearted. Faint-hearted. Agree? Okay. So how am I going to deal with him then? ¿Cómo le voy a ayudar? Encourage him. Okay, encourage him. Okay. Animarlo. I imagine you've done that, right? Okay, and we do that, and we, we be patient. We do that over and over again. Here's the thing. Christians can struggle with sin, but we grow progressively. Okay. It's, up and it's up and down, but it's generally up, right? Okay. Can being faint-hearted 
become, become a sin of omission? Does that make sense? Uh, can it become a habit? Yeah. Because we don't do things in our own strength, right? Okay. So you're going to encourage him. You're going to help him. But what can we expect out of that man? Anyone? If he's reading his Bible and he's loving people and he's being encouraged by his pastor, he will grow. And yet the church continually tells us that we're being uncompassionate if we expect him to grow, right? Because it feels compassionate to empathize. Sorry. So you need to do what you're doing, encourage, encourage, encourage. And after a while, realize he may not be faint-hearted. He may be passive-aggressive. You may need to, in a loving way, say, take your eyes off yourself. It's not about you. None of us are worthy. None of us are capable. Get in gear. You know? help, help us out. Come on. Humility is not thinking poorly of yourself. Humility is not thinking of yourself. This is what Paul Tripp does so well in this right here. But the most loving thing you can do is either help him okay, to maybe become an elder or realize he does not have the constitution for it. And don't make him an elder. You're always going to pastor him, but you're going to pour into the, you teach the teachable. Let's be honest. We could spend the next two decades trying to help a guy be an elder who's not capable. And yet we will gladly spend the next five decades pastoring him into the grave. That's a good thing. See the balance? But I need elders. So my week is I'm preparing messages, sermons. I'm training elders. And then I fill in the gaps and pastor. And then I train these men to help me pastor. Yeah. All right, got time for one more. Two more. How's that? <laughs> Yeah, give it to me one more time. If it's just a pastor involved in this process, does the congregation, the leaders in the congregation, also help with this process? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it, it's, pri it's the pastor and fellow elders es el pastor los otros ancianos. because they are already theologically and relationally qualified. Porque ya están teológicamente y relacionalmente calificados. The congregation provides the environment by which we have to do on-the-job training. But this is one reason why I can't have the congregation teaching the elders. I want a high congregational involvement, but I want, to be frank, I want the congregation following the best men. And if the congregation has the best men in it, then let's make them elders. But make them go through the time. Hey, if, if a very famous pastor showed up at my church tomorrow, I'd still have him stack chairs first. Okay? 
Okay? I'd still have him. He'd say, hey, I want to serve. Hey, quiero servir. Great. Bien. Jorge's really down. Would you take him to lunch? Jorge está muy desanimado. Llévalo a lunch. Yeah. Would you give him a ride to work? Llévalo al trabajo. Necesita una you see what I'm saying? If he says yes, that's the guy I want to teach someday, you know. If he says no, tell him to go to seminary and teach. <laughs> we'll take that out of the tape. <laughs> I'm just translating that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. Do you keep an X amount of elders with you, or do you kind of keep it as a ratio to your congregation? Ah, good question. Okay, I pastor a small church. But if I had 15 qualified men, I'd make them elders. Okay, so I've tried to remove ratios from the equation. Because I want to use whoever the Lord gives me. But there's been time when there's only been two of us. And that's okay. God gives us grace. I don't want to put someone who's not qualified in. That's a very good question. Yeah. Okay. Can I pray for us? And I'll, I'll hang around here afterwards. Actually, what time is the next session? We're at lunch right now. The boss says we're at lunch. <laughs> Gracious Father, we thank you for this time we can spend together. I pray that those things that I have said that uh, are not helpful or unedifying would be forgotten. And I pray that these men and women are encouraged. As there is no greater duty than to serve the bride of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you.